Chris, and in this video we're going to take a look at the different types of selection. So we've talked about natural selection, and if you haven't already been exposed to that, then please click here and you can take a look at our explanation of natural selection. But once we're familiar with that general concept of survival of the fittest, we're going to take a look at a few specific types of selection that can occur. So here we see stabilizing, directional, and disruptive selection. And it has to do with what kinds of traits are favored and towards what end of the spectrum. So let's say we were talking about something like size. So stabilizing selection is when you see the largest concentration right in the middle. So that would be something like, um, in terms of size, that would say that medium size is favored for survival. Too small or too big can be problematic, but right in the middle, that's where we see the greatest concentration of those species in terms of size. And then genetically, that means that that particular trait is a little bit more frequent in the gene pool, so that's what gets passed down most commonly. Directional selection is when you have selection that takes place towards a certain direction. And it could be something like this, where in terms of size, this would suggest that a larger species is more favored for survival. That might mean something that can defend itself better. Or you could also have directional selection in the other direction. You could have something like this, where perhaps a species is more favored for survival if it's smaller. Maybe that's a species that can hide more easily and get away from predators more easily. So you might see directional selection go in that direction. It can be either way, but as long as it's only one of those two ways, then we're talking about directional selection. When you have both taking place at the same time, that's what we refer to as disruptive selection. So disruptive selection would be if you see peaks on both ends. So in the case of size, that would be something that indicates that small species and large species are able to survive, but the organisms right in the middle of that species, for that species, medium size is not favored. So this might be something like the larger individuals that can protect themselves against predators survive, the smaller ones that can hide are able to survive, but then right in the middle, it's maybe a little bit less favored. So stabilizing selection favors the middle, directional selection favors one of the extremes, and disruptive selection favors both extremes in terms of natural selection. And there are a variety of factors that can determine why something might be favored right in the middle or on one end versus the other, or even both ends at the same time. So those factors vary from species to species, from organism um, to organism. But the important thing to understand is visually, if we understand the difference between stabilizing, directional, and disruptive selection, then we'll be in good shape if we see any of this information on the types of natural selection tested. For more, please feel free to visit our website at sandersontestprep.com. You can also check out more biology lessons at STP TV. Thanks for watching.